Today we're talking about the DJI Mini 3. It's a long-term review, I've been flying it for a while, and I know a lot of you are still out there flying the DJI Mini 2, which is a fantastic drone, and I did a lot of films about this drone, how to fly it, how to get the best out of it, and how to, you know, make it look like a professional drone. The Mini 3 is $110 more, so if I was in the shop today, and I had to choose one of these, I would definitely save on food, water, washing myself, <laughs> and put in the $110 more to get the DJI Mini 3, which is a fantastic drone. There are a few massive, massive differences. For $110 more, you're gonna get it with the RCN1, which is a great controller, but I've become really used to the DJI RC. Now, if you want the Mini 3 with the DJI RC, it's gonna cost $250 more than the Mini 2 with the RC N1. This controller, by the way, is amazing. It has 700 nits, so it's not super bright, like 1000 nits, like the RC Pro, but and it may be a little bit slower. You know, it that's fine. But once it's up and running, it is fresh, you know? You don't have to have your phone connected, you don't have to put in cables, you can have your phone on, you don't have to go into airplane mode or anything crazy. It's really high quality, it feels really good to hold, it has screen recording, it's got all the doodahs that you need from a controller without spending, you know, $1,000 for the RC Pro. It really is a fantastic controller. So $250 more than the Mini 2, you can get the Mini 3 with the RC, which is really, really great. But for $110 more, you can just get it with normal N1 if you wish. Now, the Mini 3 works with the RC, the Mini 2 doesn't. Just keep that in mind. The Mini 3 has an f1.7 aperture, which is really, really bright. The Mini 2 has f2.8. The Mini 3 has true vertical shooting. The most annoying thing in the Batman 2, when you know I was putting my videos on Instagram and reels and stories, is I would have to crop in like 300 or something percent, and the image would turn to crap. You know, it would just it'd be it'd be really really fugly. With the Mini 3, and you have vertical shooting. You just press a button and it twirls around. Press the button again and you're back in horizontal mode, filming like a normal human who isn't of the Instagram generation. But the Instagram generation, TikTok generation, all, you know, YouTube shorts, it comes in handy. With this drone, you can do all that with a flip of a switch. It flips around and you have true vertical shooting, which is also really great because you can use it with quick shots. Quick shots are really short kind of fun cinematic shots that the drone does automatically. The Mini 3 does them in vertical mode as well, which is really great, just like the Mini 3 Pro, which is a completely different monster, and it's not out my favorite, but I'll get to that in a minute. Why else would you want the Mini 3 over the Mini 2? If you're out there and you're thinking, I have to upgrade, or I have to buy one of these right now, the Mini 3, because of its larger aperture and much larger sensor, I mean, I'm gonna put the sensor size on the screen right now between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 because they're both 12 megapixel photo drones. But the sensor on this is larger. The f-stop is much brighter, letting in more light. So during night scenes, you know, it's 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 gonna look a lot better. It's not gonna be so grainy, so noisy as the Mini 2. It's gonna be very crystal clear. And it's gonna allow you to get shots even darker, which is fantastic. Now, being a bigger CMOS sensor, the Mini 3 not only gives you better night shots, it has a higher dynamic range and it shoots in HDR, much like the um, DJI Mini 3 Pro. They're both 240, nine grams. You know, you don't need, you know, any crazy papers or anything. You can fly them same with the Mini 3 Pro or without restrictions in most countries. You can get the plus battery, which takes this from 38 minutes of flight time to 51. That's just, that's insane. 51 minutes of flight time requires a lot of concentration, but it means you can just fly and fly and fly and not worry about the battery at all. Because in the Mini 2, the battery was like about 31 minutes, 
38 minutes in this and 51 with the battery plus, which does put it over the 250 gram mark. Just keep that in mind. But still, I mean, that that is a lot of flight time. The Mini 3 is missing sensors. So it doesn't have follow mode because the Mini 3 Pro has sensors front, rear, downwards. Um, it doesn't have sideways sensors, so be careful flying sideways. But it has follow mode and tracking, you know, active track spotlight, which is really great for incredible cinematic shots. And I did a lot of those when I was out in America. I've done a lot of them over the year, but you know, the active track really does a great thing. The thing I do prefer over the Mini 3 with the Mini 3 Pro is that it has D-Log 10 bit. It just makes color grading a pleasure. You know, it, it's, it's just that little bit more Pro. Well, Mini 3 Pro, you know. <laughs> But 249 grams, a drone like this for this price is just mind-blowing. You're going to be picking up $559 for the N1 controller and $699 with the RC controller, which is fantastic. You know, I mean, that, that it blows my mind that these drones so advanced are at this price right now. And you've got to remember that the Mini 3, just like the Mini 3 Pro, has true vertical shooting and low-angle shooting. So the gimbal will look up at 60 degrees, which is just insane because this, the gimbal in this and the Mavic 2 Pro um, really annoyed me because you'd be flying, you'd be doing top down, looking down, or you'd be looking forward, you'd be flying in sports mode and the gimbal would be like, most annoying thing in the world. It doesn't happen in the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro. Makes my life a lot easier. Doesn't mean I'm missing a shot or I have to go back and get the shot again. It was frustrating in the Mini 2. I made it work, but it was frustrating, especially windy, sports mode. That was a big problem with this drone. Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro does not suffer from that anymore, which is really, really great. The thing that ties these together is the resolution. Although this does film in HDR, they both have, you know, 4K 30 and 2.7K 60. The Mini 3 Pro will do slow motion in 4K, which is, you know, absolutely fantastic. You can get 1080p in 120 frames per second, which is fine. It's a little bit, you know, muddy, but it still looks good. The Mini 3 Pro will make that look a lot, lot better. So do keep in mind, these two drones only have downward sensors. So no obstacle avoidance. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't mind. I turn my sensors off most of the time in this as well, unless I'm doing some crazy active track stuff. But they don't have sensors except for downwards. So you just gotta be careful. I mean, I only crashed this once and um, I never really had a problem without the sensors. I'm just careful and I'm aware of my surroundings. You know, you, you can use the drone mask. That will help you a lot. You can check out that video here, but just be aware of your surroundings. That's it. Going a little bit more professional, a bit more advanced with the sensors will allow you to do stuff like active track and spotlight which is really great. And it does come in handy if you want to be a little bit more advanced, you know? As for the signal, both of them have got O2 720p. The Mini 3 Pro has O3 1080p. So that, that, that transmission is just a little bit, you know, clearer and it does go further. You won't feel so much when it comes to, you know, signal problems and, you know, interference and stuff. So the Mini 3 Pro, it's called Pro for a reason, right? Now, both of these being 12 megapixel photo cameras, the Mini 3 Pro has 48 megapixels. So it's a huge step up in quality and resolution. So if you're looking for a drone that takes incredible photos, Mini 3 Pro is probably the way you wanna go. Mind you, I did do a video on photos from the Mini 2. You can check out right here. And printing up to A3, they were just crisp and beautiful. So. Up to A3, you know, these guys are fine. If you want to go further than the A3, I would look at the Mini 3 Pro. So bottom line, if you want to spend $449 on the Mini 2, sure. But if you can go $110 more and get the Mini 3, I would definitely do that because of F1.7 aperture and the larger sensor and true vertical and the battery. It just makes this drone a pleasure. It's 2023, right? This is the drone to get now if you want to get something. And if you want to go really pro, go for the Mini 3 Pro, which I did a video up right here and you can check that out. Any questions, comments? If you do like my video, please give me a like. That will help a lot. 
do subscribe because that's you know it's it's, it's going to be a cool year this year. We're going to hit hundred thousand, and um, yeah, thanks guys. Nice seeing you. Well, you, you saw me. <laughs>